The law of attraction is supposed to be a demonstration of how powerful you are when you hold in mind what you want. So why is it so hard to do sometimes? Why is it saying that the closer you get to your goal, the more you seem to push it away? Today, I'm going to show you how you might be sabotaging the law of attraction without even realizing it and what to do about that. Check this out. Welcome to The Power of Quiet, the simple way to self-realization. So if you want total control over your mind and more happiness and abundance in your life, then you've come to the right place. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. You're going to love what we show you, primarily because what we do here is experiential, meaning we don't just talk about wonderful concepts. We do something that enables you to prove all of this out for yourself firsthand and showing yourself just how powerful you are. Now, if you are a regular here and you love the work that we do and you get great gains from practicing this work and releasing, then let us know. Hit the like button below, share your gains, any experiences that you have or any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll jump in whenever I can and answer the questions to the best of my ability. Now, today we're going to take a look at a major flaw in the law of attraction that really trips up a lot of people. Now, as you may know, the law of attraction, it's a simple concept. The premise of it is simply that the mind is a creative instrument. And if you hold in mind only what you want, that's all that you would get all the time. Now, the problem with that is that the law of attraction, the way most people present it, they only present one side of the equation. And to illustrate what I'm talking about here, I want to introduce you to the idea of attachments and aversions. Now, attachments and aversions You'll find this used in lots of spiritual teachings. It's used a lot in Hinduism, and it is a major component of Lester Levinson's whole process of using his method of releasing, but using that process through identifying attachments and aversions, seeing those and letting those go, releasing both the attachments and the aversions. And in doing so, the mind goes quiet, you get rid of all of the feelings of lack, the feelings of limitations, the feelings of neediness. And what's left over is a rock solid sense of who you really are. And that part of you is most powerful. So what are attachments and aversions? What are they all about? They're both desires but they're on opposite sides of the coin. So an attachment is a desire, a desire to have something like, I want that, bring that to me. Where an aversion, it's also a desire, but in the opposite direction. I don't want that, <laughs> get that away from me. Now we have attachments and aversions all over the place, thousands and thousands of them. And we have attachments and aversions to the same things. I'll give you some examples. Like we have an attachment to our mother, right? We love our mother. She brought us into the world. But sometimes we have an aversion to her, especially when she comes over for the holidays and visits and then looks around the house and goes, oh, you're not taking good care of this place, All right? She's kind of picking on us and stuff and up comes the aversion. And these attachments and aversions, they show up with goals that we have, like you know, if we have a goal to have more wealth, more abundance, more money in our life. Obviously, we have an attachment to it. Oh, I want more money. That would enable me to do wonderful things, have great toys, and on and on and on. But 
there's also an aversion to it, such as, well, if I get a lot of money, then I might have to pay a lot of taxes. Or if I have a lot of money, then maybe people start treating me different. Or I might just get caught up in the whole thing and get very materialistic and lose sense of myself. And then plus, you know, we hear all these little sayings, like when we grow up like money doesn't grow on trees or money's the root of all evil. And then we have these other ideas and feelings about it. Like, you know, money's dirty. It has germs and all that stuff. You know, ick. you know, if you touch it, you got to wash your hands. So all these things kind of accumulate to aversions that we also have to money. And this is where the one-sidedness of the law of attraction shows up because the law of attraction is all about, oh, this is what I want, and I want to focus on what I want, and make a vision board out of it, and repeat it, and hold it in mind, and feel like it is mine. We're all you know, focused on the attachment side, but often ignoring the aversions that we have. And the thing about these aversions is we push them down into the subconscious because we don't like looking at our aversions. We got no problem looking at our attachments and we're very aware of what our attachments are, that the things that we're, we're dreaming of all the time, oh, I want this. But the aversions we often don't want to look at because they're disturbing to us and they stir up a lot of unwanted feelings, lacking feelings in us. And we're like, I don't even want to go there. So we push it down into the subconscious and pretend and forget that they're there. But they're still running there. It's like a virus in a computer, right? They're still underneath the surface corrupting, you know, all of our goals and everything. And that's why when we're trying to attract something or manifest something, especially when we get really close to having it, we just seem to sabotage the whole thing right at the last minute. Or otherwise, we just seem, it seems like the closer we get to it, the further it moves away from us. And we just never catch up to it. And that's why it's because of the aversions, the subconscious thoughts and feelings, they're actually pushing it away. And if we don't look at those, they're just going to remain there and continue to sabotage us. And this is what most people miss. And they end up blaming the law of attraction. Well, it doesn't work. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Well, I'm going to show you how to identify the aversion side of whatever your goal is and start eliminating it. But first, I want to just highlight what I'm talking about with some personal examples of how I've seen this play out, especially recently. Now, one of the things that I do is I trade. I trade gold, copper, and oil primarily. And I've seen this aversion phenomena come up a lot in the trading. And it often works like this. So, Say the market is up here, right? The price is trading up in this area. And through my analysis, I identify something way down here that I have a lot of different analyses all pointing to this exact spot, right? So a bunch of points are coming together saying, if it gets down here, this is a high probable turning point. So I place an order in the market out you know, at that level, way down here. And if the price gets down there, hey, great. If it doesn't get down there, that's fine too. I'll adjust my analysis and go from there. So I put that order in and I just wait and see what the market does. Now, say three or four days later, right, the market's been trading up here, but now all of a sudden it's moving down right towards my projection. And as it's getting close to it, I find myself like tensing up inside, 
feeling like, wait, I'm not ready for this yet. <laughs> no, go back up there. Maybe tomorrow. Wait, I, but not now. I, I don't want this right now. And there's no logical reason for it. And if I was to try to examine it, maybe there's a fear. Well, I could be wrong. And it can just go right through my point and and then I'll, I'll lose out on this trade. But really, there's no reason to have fear about it because my analysis is at a particular point and I've set a, a threshold of risk to it. So if it passes me, so what? I get stopped out. Big deal. <laughs> I get enough trades right the other time that it's not a concern of mine. So why should I feel so tensed up? when I should feel it, be feeling the opposite. Like, hey, my analysis is right. It's coming right to where I expected it to come. Now, I say this to point out that it's very alluring to want to go in and examine what's going on in the mind and try to figure out, well, where's this coming from? You know, maybe I have some sort of a program. Maybe it's because my third grade teacher told me that I would never amount to something. And I ha I've had these feelings of unworthiness ever since. And maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I'm getting so tensed up. Or maybe I just have a fear of losing and that's what it is. Now I could sit there and examine my thoughts all day long. But the beauty of Lester's method is, is that the thoughts bring you to the underlying feeling and energy that you've been suppressing inside. And once you identify that, the thought itself, the story, it's done its job. And all you need to do is just release what it is that you found that you've been suppressing, that feeling, the desire. And once you let that go, right at the root of it, then the whole story disappears. And you realize, like whatever cockamamie story that was, it wasn't even true to begin with. Therefore, if it's a story that's just made up in the mind, it's not even true, then what's the point of trying to understand it? Or know like, where did it come from? How did it get there? Yeah, it's like if you get a splinter in your finger. You don't really care what color it is, how it got there, how long it's been there. You just see it go, oh, there's a splinter there. Let's pluck it out, all right, done. And that's what this method is all about. It's about keeping it simple. So what I've seen like in this specific situation when I'm trading, that that feeling of getting tensed up and just kind of clutching when I'm actually about to get my goal, I don't need to understand it. All I need to recognize is, oh, I got some resistance there. I have an aversion there. And that I can just let go right on the spot. Very simple. And I'm going to show you how simple that is in a moment. But I'm going to give you another example. For a number of years now, I've been putting out videos on this channel. And it's been growing slow, steadily, but slowly. Now, all of a sudden, my last couple of videos have just exploded. For some reason, YouTube has decided that they really like those videos and they really pushed them out. And over the last two or three weeks, I've seen the number of new subscribers coming in increased by over 20 fold. I mean, it's just been a massive explosion of new people coming in. And if you're one of those, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And for the first couple of days, I'm like, hey, this is cool. But as it continued on, I'm starting to get like an uncomfortable feeling like, okay, like that's enough. Okay, you can slow down now. And again, if I was to examine, well, where's that coming from? Why am I feeling that way? Maybe it's because, well, if I 
get all this activity and the channel's growing. Now I'm going to feel like I need to pump out content and put more work into this. I'm going to feel a lot of pressure, maybe. Maybe. Or maybe, you know, if I get like really excited and happy about all the uh, new activity and then all of a sudden it just stops, then I'll feel let down, like, like, <gasps> you know, and I don't want to be let down. So maybe I'm just trying to protect myself that way. Again, I could sit there for hours and hours, days and days, trying to figure out if, if is that where it's coming from? Is that why I feel like that? And again, it doesn't matter. I can go right underneath that thought, just eliminate the resistance, that aversion in what I'm feeling in a very simple way. And once the resistance is gone, then the whole story, those thought patterns, they just disappear. Again, they're just made up stories that weren't even real to begin with. So let me show you how you can start identifying when you have resistance towards your goals and what to do about that. How you can just start dissolving that resistance and dissolving your aversion so that you're more open and you feel just easy and natural to have your goal. So think about a goal. Think about something that you want to manifest in your life. All right, you have something in mind? Now, I'm gonna show you something very simple, but also something that's very eye-opening. Now, close your eyes for a moment and think about having this goal. Imagine it shows up right now in this moment. <laughs> it walks right through that door. You've got that goal right now. Now, as you're thinking about getting that goal right now, what I want you to do is just pay attention to what you're feeling in your stomach or chest area. And if it helps you, you can, like I said, close your eyes and also put your head down towards your stomach or chest. And notice if you just feel like a tightness or contraction, sort of a clenching up or tensing up in your stomach or chest, even, even though you're thinking about having that goal. Notice that. And what that contraction is, it's your body letting you know that you're pushing away, that you're resisting having it. Now, wherever you feel that contraction, all right, it might be up here and you know, like around your sternum or it might be lower down in your gut, wherever you feel it the most right now, I'll show you how to let that blockage go. So wherever that energy is, wherever that feeling is, open up an imaginary window or door right in front of that. And now imagine that feeling, that energy, moving out the door, just going right on out. And you can imagine this however you want. There's no wrong way to do this. So you could see this as smoke going out that imaginary door or water flowing out or light just emanating out the door. Just imagine that energy leaving now out that door. And imagine a little bit more of that energy leaving. And let that energy go a little bit more.
and let that energy go even more. And a little bit more. And it's just energy. Like I said, you don't need to examine it. You don't need to analyze it. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just energy passing through. So just open up that door even more, even wider now. And just let some more of that energy go now. And more. And some more. And even more. And even more. And notice how you feel. Just notice if you feel a little bit lighter. You notice the difference? And that's how easy it is to release. And that lighter feeling that you're feeling now, that's the real you showing up. The powerful you. The you that is the creator, right? You're feeling more of yourself, not your ego, but your real self. It feels nice. So it really is as simple as that. This is just a simple demonstration of letting go. But this is just scratching the surface of it. Now I'm gonna show you another way that you can identify this resistance. And you might have identified some resistance that you have to completing your goals. You may recognize that like, every time you get close to it, you just sabotage yourself and you don't know why. And again, you don't need to examine it, but just identify like, where you see that you've been actually resisting your goals. Maybe it's been showing up as procrastination. And whether it's rolling up your sleeves and actually doing something to achieve that goal, or even doing the inner work to achieve it. Right? You've just been blowing it off. I don't have time I, uh, later. And that's resistance. So, just... Identify the resistance, whatever resistance is noticeable to you. And measure the resistance that you have. Measure it on a scale of zero to 10. 10 being the most resistant and zero being the least resistant. And see where you're at. Now, whatever number you've come up with, right? Maybe it's small, just a little bit of resistance. Maybe it's at a three. Or maybe it's big, right? It's at an eight or nine. Whatever that number is. Can you see that when resistance comes up for you, and you know what that resistance feels like. You feel it a lot. You know, we resist lots of things. And when that resistance comes up, can you see that you don't like the resistance? And when that resistance shows up, you have a tendency to say no to the resistance. Like, oh, get out of here. I don't want you. Right? Just check. And if so, when you say no to the resistance, does that make the resistance go away? No. In fact, when you say no to the resistance, it just gets worse, doesn't it? You're actually adding to it. So if saying no to it doesn't work, it actually digs you even deeper into a hole, then let's do something different. So take a look at that resistance now. Whatever number you came up with, just look at that resistance. All right, well, my resistance, okay. It's at a three. Just look right at that resistance. And this time, instead of saying no to it, like resistance, I don't want you, get out of here. Just say yes to it. And it's that simple. Three little letters, Y-E-S. Just say yes to the resistance. Try it. 
and say yes to the resistance a little bit more. And say yes to the resistance a little bit more. And say yes to it even more. And say yes to the resistance even more. And say yes to it even more. And say yes to it even more. All right? Now measure yourself again. See where you are now. If you're at a three, maybe you went to a two or a one or even zero. If you're at an eight or a nine, maybe you went to a seven or all the way down to a two or three. But just notice if you moved. Again, notice the difference. And that right there is showing you results. Because now you see, well, my tendency, my ego tendency has been to have an aversion to the resistance. And see, when I have an aversion to it and I say no to it, it persists. It stays there. But when I do the opposite, when I just surrender, when I come from a loving place, when I come from an imperturbable place where I'm just like, resistance, I'm not bothered by you. You can stay there. And I just say yes to you. I love you, resistance. Then it just disappears. And where did the resistance go? Can you put that resistance in a bag? Can you ship it off via UPS? What did you let go of? Nothing. It was all a bunch of nothing. But by you deciding to be positive and keeping it simple and just letting go, it just disappears. And again, if you went from like a nine to a five or a three to a one, you feel the difference and you feel lighter. And that lighter feeling is the real you showing up. So now, just see if there's any resistance remaining. You've got some momentum now. You've let go of some of it. So let's capitalize on this momentum and let go pushing down the rest of it. Just let the rest of it come up now. Just welcome up the rest of that resistance. See it as energy. Nothing more. It's not good. It's not bad. And just open up and let that energy pass through. Let it go. And let it go a little bit more. And some more. And even more. And let that go even more. And notice how you feel. Nice and easy, isn't it? And that's the beauty of Lester's method. It's simple and it's easy. And you get fast results by practicing it, super fast. So if you are new to the channel and you're wondering who this Lester guy is, I've been talking about. Lester, he was a physicist and an engineer who back in the 1950s, he had suffered a second massive heart attack and the doctors had sent him home to die. And when he went home, he said to himself, Lester, you're stupid, 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 because he spent his whole life studying physics and mathematics and engineering and psychiatry and economics and medicine all the pursuits of man to use the mind to understand what the universe is all about. And he had studied a lot, but when the doctors told him that he had only two weeks to live, he realized that all the knowledge that he'd accumulated got him nowhere. He didn't get the answers that he was looking for. All it did was it just got him to a place where he was a dead man. And that's why he said, Lester, you're stupid, stupid, stupid. But being a scientist, he decided that well, if this formula that I've been going through my whole life to find the answers, that doesn't work, then, 
you just have to wipe the slate clean and start from scratch. And that's what Lester did. He just wiped the whole slate clean and then he started to examine his life. And he saw that all the times when he was successful and abundant and happy, he was loving. Whereas all the times when he was sick and his businesses are failing and he had other problems, he was wanting love. He was looking for the world to give it to him. So he asked himself, well, if I just let go of looking for it out there and let go of all my non-loving feelings in here, would that make a difference? And that led him to stumble upon this natural ability that we all have to let go. And in three months time, Lester not only proved that he could completely cure his body and that the same principle applied to his finances, but in three months, he completely eliminated his ego quieted that thing permanently and became a realized master. Now, in the description in this video below, I'm going to put a link to a talk that Lester gave where he gave an introduction to what the method is all about. And he talks about who and what we really are. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful talk, very uplifting and very insightful and very simple. So I'll put a link to that in the description. You could check that out if you want to learn more about Lester and hear him come from his own words about what this is all about. And if you want to learn his method in depth, because what we do here on this channel is just scratching the surface. His course is very comprehensive. You absolutely love it. And so all the best of his work over the decades has been condensed into a 21-day self-study course. And I'll put a link to that also in the description below. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you could check it out, see if you like it, see if it gets results. I guarantee you're going to be absolutely thrilled with it. So you could check that out and find out for yourself what life is all about and who you really are. So thank you for hanging out with me today. Again, if you like this, hit the like button below. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't, and I'll see you in the next video.